Hi, gang. It's me, Robin Schneider, and I'm so happy Zoe asked me back for another guest lecture on her channel. This week, I'm going to be giving you my top five Adobe Illustrator tips and time savers for fashion designers. So let's get to it. All right, let's count back from five. The first tip is create a custom workspace. Adobe Illustrator Workspace is good for a lot of things, but it isn't good for fashion. They just did not design it with us in mind. And this workspace doesn't have all the things we need available when we need them. So make your own and here's how to do it. I don't like the options here. So I'm gonna go up to this little workspace icon and start by opening Essentials Classic. And that's gonna give me access to a lot of the things that I like to use, like brushes and symbols. And then I start pulling them all out and setting them up. Now, this is kind of moved out a little bit because I've already messed with it. So let's just reset it to Essentials Classic. So you'll see what it looks like if you were to click on it. It'll look like this. And now I start pulling out the things that I use most often. That includes the Layers panel. Let's open that up. And then I start adding additional panels in here and tab it with the layers panel. The other thing I always want is graphic styles. So we're going to put that in there. I want the stroke panel. And I'm going to want brushes. And let's make this just a little bit wider so we can tuck those all in together. And lastly, symbols. So I like having all of those things accessible together but the one I keep up most of the time is layers. The next thing I like to use is the appearance panel, but I prefer to put it on the left side of my screen. So we'll just open that up over there. And then the rest of everything you see here, I really don't use. So it works for me to close them all out and really get them out of the way and just keep this over here. And I'll open it up so I have an option of seeing all my layers. Now, the reason mine are so big is because I like to change the size and scale of my layers panel. And in case you don't know how to do this, you click on this little hamburger icon, you go down to panel options, and this is where you can change the size. Now, the default is small, and that's probably what yours looks like. Actually, it's not small because that doesn't have icons. It's medium. There you go. That is probably what you're looking at. But I find it a lot easier if I've got it set bigger. And so uh, you can set it to large or you can click other and type in whatever size you like. And I like 60 pixels. So I'm gonna click okay. And now I can see what's on each of my layers really easily. The other things I like to have open are Pathfinder and Align. So if you go up to window, you can find the Align panel and that panel opens up with Transform, Align, and Pathfinder. So I'm just going to bring it over here and tuck Appearance into that and leave that up here on my page. And this is the workspace that I prefer. Now, once you have the workspace set up the way you want it, you can save it for future use. So all you need to do is go back up here to the workspace icon, go down to the bottom and click on New Workspace, and now give it a name. We'll call this one Zoe's space and then click OK and that's all there is to it. So now if we were to open up Illustrator and it was set to Essentials or Essentials Classic, doesn't really matter at this point. If I want to get back to that space I just created, all I have to do is click up here and select Zoe space and there it is and it's going to be ready to go every time I need it and that is number five. Tip number four is create your own shortcut keys. There are definitely tools in Illustrator that we use and we use them frequently, but they don't have shortcut keys and so it takes us longer to get to them. Well, you can save yourself a lot of time by creating your own custom shortcut keys. Here's a couple that I use. I am really partial to using this tool here, the group selection tool, but as you can see, it does not have a shortcut key assigned to it. This tool allows you to select things within a group without ungrouping them. So I can just move things here out of the way without ungrouping them. But if I want to select the entire group they're in, you just click again on the same item and it will select everything in that group. Now let me undo to put that stuff back where it came from. 
and let's make a custom shortcut key for that. We're going to go up to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts. And once you're here, you've got the option of setting shortcut keys for tools and also setting shortcut keys for menu commands. We're going to start with tools. I want a shortcut key for that group selection tool. And here it is. So I just clicked on it to activate it. I'm going to use the shortcut key letter Q. I like Q because it's very close to the letter A, and oftentimes I switch back and forth between the direct selection tool and the group selection tool. So I'm going to go with Q and click OK. But look what happens. It's asking me if I want to overwrite the current set, which is the current set of, um, excuse me, the current set of graphic styles. I just happen to have named it Q. I'm going to say yes. And now when I click the letter Q, it is going to give me that tool. So let's go back to the move tool. And now if I type the letter Q on my keyboard, I get the group selection tool. Let's do another one. Again, we're going to go to Edit, Keyboard Shortcuts, and this time, instead of Tools, we're going to go to Menu Commands. There's a menu command I use frequently, and there's not a shortcut key for it. So let's go down to Object, slow, scroll, ooh, blah. <laughs> scroll down a little bit more, Path, and Offset Path. And you'll notice, again, there is no shortcut key for that. So we're going to click on Offset Path. And the shortcut key I happen to like for this one is Control Q. Now, Control Q is already being used for quit, but I don't use it that often for quit, so it makes more sense for me to do it this way. And it will give you a warning saying it's already used for something else. It's not giving me a warning because I've already changed these and it knows not to give me a warning. So uh, I typed in what I want, which is Control Q, and now I'm going to click OK. And again, it's asking me if I want to overwrite the set. And the answer is yes. And now when I use that shortcut key, it's going to allow me to offset path. So you'll see if I draw a shape and then go Control Q, it brings up the offset path menu. Now, when you offset path to a positive number, it goes to the outside. But if you do a negative number, it'll offset to the inside. And I generally will offset negative 1.5 because that's a really good size for me for stitches. So I'm going to click OK. And then I can just go ahead and change that to stitches. And that's the best way for me to add stitches to a garment. And it's very easy when you have a custom shortcut key to do it. Tip number three, adjust the nudge. The nudge is the amount that the arrow keys on your keyboard move when you try to move something over. And the default for the nudge is one point. So when you're moving something, and let's go ahead and grab that group selection tool, and I'm just going to grab one of these and sort of move it out of the way. When you're moving something around, you can use the little arrow keys on your keyboard to move them. But sometimes the one point nudge moves them just a little bit too far and there's no way to really fine tune what you're doing. Well, you can do it by adjusting the nudge. The way you get there is edit, preferences. Where are we? Down here. And the shortcut for that is control K or command K. And you want to go to general. That's where command K will take you. And you can see that the default size for the keyboard increment is one point. So I like to take that and make it point one point and click OK. And now my nudge amount is really, really, really tiny, and I can fine tune what I'm doing. The good news is, if you need it to move faster, all you have to do is hold the Shift key, and it will bring it back to the one point nudge, and things will move much faster for you. So there you have it, tip number three. Tip number two, add profiles. Profiles are a way to make your illustration look really elegant, like a pen and ink drawing. And it really takes your work to the next level. So let me show you what I'm talking about. See the gathers here on the shoulders? They're kind of flat. But if we go ahead and select them and go up here, and instead of using the default profile, we drop down and select this profile we get a much more finessed look, which is a lot nicer. Let's do it again down here. 
I'm going to grab all of these. And you can see I use the group selection tool. Make selections go much faster. We're going to go up here to the stroke panel, down to the bottom, select a much nicer profile. And now you can see it just looks so much more elegant. Now, in the case of this, I still think it's a little bit uh, too thick. So let's go from one point to maybe 0.75. So it's just a little bit more delicate. And that is what profiles can do for you. Definitely takes your illustrations or your CADs to the next level. And now for my number one tip, use graphic styles. So important to use graphic styles. If you're not doing it, this is going to be the biggest time saver ever. So let me show you why graphic styles are so important. They're kind of a one-stop shop for adding details to your flats. So let's say I wanted to add some sort of detail to the hem of this flat. I'm going to go over to where I have all my gathers grouped together and lock it so it doesn't get in my way. And let's zoom in to the bottom here. I'm going to use the lasso tool and I'm going to select the bottom hem. And then I'm going to copy it and paste it. Now, you'll notice when it pasted back in front, it pasted with a fill because I copied a one-point stroke with a fill, right? So we're going to nudge it up a little bit, and this is where that fine-tuning in your nudge key comes in handy. And now if I want to uh, add a brush or something to this, I have to go to my brushes, select the brush I want to use, but it's still got this white fill on it, so I've got to go over here, select my fill, and make sure I change it to no fill in order to have this looking the way I want it to look. Wouldn't it be nice if I could have done that with one click? Here's what I mean. Once I have it set up the way I want it, which means the brush stroke that I want with no fill on the brush, I'm gonna to go to my graphic styles. In your graphic styles window, you're gonna click new graphic style, and it's gonna take the combination of um, attributes that you have on that path and make it a new graphic style. We'll just call this hem detail. So now if I want to do this again, I'm going to go ahead and turn this back to default. So it's a white fill and a single one point stroke. If I want to add my hem detail now, instead of going to brushes and then changing the fill, I can just click on hem detail and magically, it does both of those things. Now, why is this so important? Well, besides the fact that it's a time saver, it's also a way to guarantee that you are consistent within your flats. And if you're working on a team, you can make sure that all team members have the same graphic styles for consistency among your team. So I've got some graphic styles that are really, really useful. Let me draw a little square here and show you what I've got. The first thing I have is a round uh, shape. So it's a one point stroke with a white fill and you'll see it's got round corners. If we open the stroke panel, you can see round corners and that's because fabric is soft and I don't like the default, right? Which is these pointy corners. Now it will zoom in really close so you can see, right? Illustrator default has these pointy corners but I like them round. So I've got a white fill one point stroke with round corners and I went ahead and made a graphic style out of that and there it is. For the back of my garments, I like to have the same thing, round corners, but a gray fill. So there's my gray graphic style. I've got one for stitches, which besides being the stitch size I like, you can see it has no fill. And so these things are really going to speed up the process and make life so much easier. But I'm gonna give you one last little bonus tip. Once you've made this round graphic style, right? The round corners, white fill, one point stroke, you can make it your actual default. And you do that by holding your Option or Alt key, clicking on that new round graphic style and dragging it on top of the default graphic style icon and then release your mouse. And now, whenever I hit the D key for default, I am going to get a round corner. 
So let's do this. Let's take this back. I'm going to zoom in really close and we're going to make it what the old default was. And now if I hit the D key on my keyboard, like magic, I get round corners and round caps. And that is my absolute favorite shortcut of all. So remember, as Zoe always says, practice, not magic. It does take a little practice to get used to these shortcuts, but I promise you it will be worth it. So if you found this tutorial helpful, you can check out my YouTube channel and visit my website, adobeforfashion.com. I've also got classes online at LinkedIn Learning. I hope to see you there.